Today we are going to be doing lesson four, which is module three. Lesson four, and we're doing our plot intro part two. We also have a verse quiz at the end of today. Um, just a note, the text we're using for plot is just a read aloud. Uh, it's actually about World War II, and then we're going to apply it to the book of Luke, okay? So we're at main campus, we're at quarter four, week two, lesson four. Let's dive into our question of the day. Why was the Bible written? Here's Pastor Lyra. Hey, fifth and sixth grade scholars, this is Pastor Dan Lyra, and I'm trying to answer some of your questions that you had from uh, Word of God class. Uh, let's take a look at one of them from Travion. This is a really good question. Why was the Bible written? Why was the Bible written? And you could come up with a lot of good answers for that, like the Bible was written so that we could know God. The Bible was written so that we could know how God feels about us. The Bible was written so that we could know how to feel about God. Um, mostly the Bible was written because uh, we would not have information about God, really. I mean, the important information, uh, except he told us in his word, and his word is the Bible. My favorite passages for, uh, for this question, why was the Bible written? Uh, one of them is in John chapter 20. Uh, John chapter 20, verse 31 where the gospel writer John tells us that uh, I could have written a lot more stuff about Jesus in my book, the Gospel of John, but I, I just, you know, I couldn't write everything. And then he says this, and, and this is true about the whole Bible. He says, these things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ and that by believing you may have life in his name. You want to know why the Bible was written? So that you may believe in Jesus and then have eternal life in his name. And that's the way the Apostle Paul puts it too. In uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, he says about Timothy, you have known from the time you were a little pup, he says, you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. You want to know why we study the Bible here at St. Marcus? So that we can be wise unto salvation, that we can know Jesus as our Savior and be saved. Thanks for the question. All right, awesome. Let's move forward um, with our, oops, it's not Travion's birthday anymore. Okay, here we go. Um, today is the 37th day of Lent. As we're journeying to the cross, we're headed into Good Friday this weekend and then Easter Sunday. Let's pray for these scholars in fifth. Pause the video if you're in fifth. These for sixth and pause the video to pray. All right, let's dive in. We're studying the book of Luke, and in order to study it effectively, we're learning how to use a plot line to identify main events in the book of Luke and how they build up to a climax. Let's do this verse. Repeat after me, okay? I'm going to say the first part, and then it's your turn to repeat, okay? I'm going to turn down a little bit. Come on, guys. You got this. Let me hear you, even if you're virtual or North Campus. Here we go. But I say to you who hear, love your enemies. When I pause, you gotta say it. But I say to you who hear, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. To the one who strikes you on the cheek. For the other also and from one who takes away your cloak do it again and from one who takes away your cloak one more time and from one who takes away your cloak 
Do not withhold your tunic either. Hey. Nice job, guys. All right, let's move forward. Um, you have a quiz today. Um, and just a reminder, the verse tells you what you should do. Oh, we're not going to do that, actually. I'm going to keep going. This is our pattern statement. Um, you do have a quiz today, and you are going to dive in at the end of the lesson. Today, we're going to finish our read aloud. So let's dive in and finish the read aloud, and then you're going to take your quiz. Here we go. We finished yesterday um, with, we started with characters, Miriam, father, mother, and we got the setting. We are on May 10th in World War II in Holland, because we do where and when. And then the problem or goal is the Jews are in danger and need to hide from the Germans. So our first event is Miriam packs and prepares to go to the country. And the second event is that her dad drops her off with a new family in the country. So here we go. Let's keep reading. And we're going to hit um, event number three today. So we ended yesterday with Miriam being dropped off um, at the farm. Okay, here we go. My father shakes hands with Nello's parents. He bends down to give me a hug. I have to ask him, Papa, why am I safer here than with you and Mama? Because this family is not Jewish, he answers very slowly. He kisses my forehead. I try not to let him go, but he's gone. The cows are black and white and full of milk. Small barges move along the center of the canal. Where's the war? Do you know where the war is? I ask Nello. We're sitting on a bank of grass. I'm trying not to think of home. I don't. Nello throws a stone into the water, but father does. Father says the soldiers will soon be everywhere. That's why you're here. Now those parents show me where to hide when the soldiers come. They press a lily painted on the center of the panel of the cupboard. Oh, these are lilies, these flowers. I know that those are Easter flowers too. They press a lily on the center panel of the cupboard. The cupboard opens. Otherwise it just looks like the wall. I peer inside. It's dark and smells of winter clothes and rubber boots. It makes me cold. Nello's father is saying, the warning signal will be whistling Frere Jaca. He puts his arm around my shoulder. When you hear it, you must come directly here. After the soldiers have gone, we will knock three times. Don't worry, Miriam, Nello's mother says. I like her voice. Don't be afraid. We will never be far from you. I'm going to pause here, and I'm going to write the next event. The next event I'm going to write here is that um, Miriam feels, uh, remember when she was with Nello, I'm going to write down that she was feeling homesick and she was learning about um, this new home that she has. So I'm going to write, Miriam feels homesick. Um, I'm actually going to make that the whole event because I think that's pretty important. The next event is that they're showing Miriam where to go if the Jew, uh, if the Germans come. So I'm going to say Miriam's new family shows her where to hide. When the soldiers come. Um, the reason guys that I put Miriam feels homesick as so important is remember her dad left. She just, felt terrible. Then after he left, she was like, man, where's the war? And then she said, um, can you tell me um, why it's safer here? And so all those contribute to this event. Then her family shows her where to hide when the soldiers come. Okay, let's continue to go. That night, a feather bed is cozy warm and Nello's mother tucks me in, but it's not my bed. I can't sleep. I can't stop crying either. Nello's mother hears me and comes back. She smooths my curls back from my face. Next morning, Nello's mother says, I hope you fell asleep, my dear. Of course you miss your parents and your home. Nello would cry if he weren't with us. But I th think about how happy your mama and your papa are, knowing you're safe here. Come, I've made some porridge with cream that's thick and clover pink. There's nothing like it. 
It'll make you smile. And Nello's father puts a basket by my bowl. I picked some berries long before you woke. They're fresh and ripe and still covered with the morning dew. He puts the berries one by one on top of the porridge. There, he leans back in his chair. There's a bright red M from Miriam. Thank you. I try to smile. I want to smile, but just then Nello jumps up from his chair. Come on. He grabs my hand and pulls me through the door. Nello's mother calls after us. The porridge will get cold. Oh, it seems like um, Miriam's new family is trying to just love her and welcome her in. So I'm going to say um, Miriam's new family tries to make her feel at home. And now that I'm reflecting on, and this is good for you to do too, I'm reflecting on what I already wrote. This doesn't seem like an event. It's just how she feels. So I'm going to add to that. Miriam feels homesick. She uh, asks Nello about the war. I'm just going to add that because I feel like this is an event and just her feeling isn't an event. So I'm glad I thought of that. I'm going to fix that. All right, now I'm going to continue reading. Nello takes me out beyond the kitchen garden near the wood. The hutch is full of rabbits, big and small. Choose one, Miriam. Nello thrusts his hand into the pockets of his wide blue pants. He's looking very proud. Go ahead. A small black rabbit sits apart from all the others by the wire. It looks at me. I pick it up. Its fur is like silk. It pushes close against my chest. I feel its nose twitch cold against my arm. I'm going to call you Hendrik. I kiss its ears. That's my papa's name. Might turn out to be Hendrika, Nello giggles. My papa says you never know with rabbits. I don't care what he is. I take a long, long breath. The ache begins to go away. Mama and Papa will be so happy that I have a rabbit. They love animals. I kiss Hendrik's nose. You're mine and I will not let anything happen to you. The rabbit's eyes are closed. I like his cold nose twitching by my arm. You're mine. I kiss his ears again. Thank you, Nello. I want to hug him, but Hendrik's in the way. Thank you. I'll keep him safe. I promise you, if the soldiers come, I'll keep my rabbit safe. I'm going to pause right here. I think that's really important. I'm going to say Miriam, uh, Miriam gets a new rabbit. She names it the same thing as her father, which is great because it's going to maybe help with her feeling homesick. She also promises to keep the rabbit safe. And that actually reminds me of what her parents did for her. So I'm going to say Miriam cheers up because she gets a rabbit of her own. Um, there's other things I could have written here. I could have said Miriam cheers up because she now has a rabbit that she's going to keep safe. I could have written Miriam um, named a rabbit the same name as her dad and it reminds her of home. There's a lot of different words I could have put here, okay? Um, but the idea is the same. All right, pause it if you need to. I'm going to keep going. Weeks pass, and I spend hours and hours with Hendrik and Nello. Then one day, I hear someone whistling for Jaka. <whistles> Just when Hendrik is taking his morning hops, the soldiers must be here. Hendrik, come, we have to go. Hendrik is nibbling on a bit of green. I creep up slowly, not to frighten him, but just as I reach out, he makes a giant hop into the herbs. Then I see Nello and his father running toward me. They both are out of breath. Miriam, come on! Nello's face is beat red. Didn't you hear us whistling? The freckles in his nose seem very large. Miriam, the soldiers are only two farms away. I can't go without Frederick. Sorry, without Hendrick. You know that, Nello. I have to keep him with me. Mama and Papa wouldn't go without him. You know that. Wow, this story is getting really good. I can see how it's building toward the climax. Never mind the rabbit, Miriam. Nello's father reaches out for me, but I drop onto my knees and scramble into the garden where I can see my rabbit nibbling, nibbling on some chives. I'm not going into the cupboard without my rabbit. I have to protect him. She's not going without a rabbit, father. Nello's voice is hoarse. 
She's named him after her father, and she's going to keep him safe no matter what. I look back at Nello's father. He's nodding his head at Nello. Then he scoops up Hendrik and me, and we're bounding into the house. Nello's mother is standing by the cupboard. Get in. There's not a second left. Get in, my child, and not a sound. She doesn't notice Hendrik in my arms. Oh, my goodness. I actually feel like there's a seventh event here, so let's just add a little seven. And we're going to say um, Miriam hides in the lily cupboard with Hendrik. Thanks, guys. Write that down quickly. I'm going to pause it. All right, and I'm going to keep reading. Here's the ending. This time there's a pillow on the floor. I pull up my legs under me. Hendrik is warm against my chest. I wait. I hear heavy footsteps past my wall. It's all right, Hendrik. I comfort him without a sound. His, no his nose is still. I hear the voices of the soldiers harsh and loud. I hear Nello's parents answering softly and slowly. I don't know how long we've been waiting, Hendrik and I, but suddenly, I'm gonna pause for a second. The climax, I think, of this story is that the soldiers have arrived. So we're gonna pause and write, the soldiers arrive and question Nello's parents. They're searching for any Jews they can find. I don't know how long we've been waiting, Hendrik and I, but suddenly we hear three soft knocks and my lily cupboard opens to the light. Here's the first picture when she's hiding inside and then here is the picture when they open the door. They've gone. Nello's mother pulls me close. Nello's father takes a long puff on his pipe. Are you all right? He asks. I'm fine, thank you. I smile at Nello. And so is Henrik. I told you, Nello, he'd be safe with me. I turn to Nello's mama and papa. Just the way my parents keep me safe with you. Oh, so the resolution is, Miriam, how did the problem get solved? Because remember, the problem and goal is that the Jews are in danger and need to hide. So Miriam safely escaped the soldiers, or you could say safely hid from the soldiers, and the, uh, and Hendrik is safe. <laughs> so both she and her bunny are safe. And then it says, families like this one hid Jewish children for five years till the war ended and saved many lives at the risk of their own. Um, I think the denouement here is this part. Just the, uh, he'll be safe with me just the way my parents keep me safe with you. So I'm going to write that as the very ending. Um, and I'm going to quote it. He'll be safe with me. And I'm going outside the box a little bit. He'll be safe with me just the way my parents keep me safe with you. Guys, I know it's a lot of writing. I'm doing all the thinking right now. Your job is to do the writing, and this is gonna prepare you for fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and high school. So make sure you pause it if you need to, and make sure you take that first quiz and that um, pattern statement quiz. All right, scholars, I'll see you tomorrow, and we are gonna dive in and do this with the Book of Luke. All right, pause it if you need to. Have a great day.